Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in previous video, we looked at how Go routines work in Go. So today I thought of using it for some real time application. Um, so I am going to do a web scrapping on Yahoo Finance in this video. And I am a lot into stocks, right? And there are times that I am too busy with work. And let's say I want to create an alert on some particular stock price. So it would be beneficial that if I have a script written or if I have a program written um, and then it automatically sends me an email or notification saying, hey, um, your stock price is down, do this, do that. You can even use APIs to buy and sell a stock, right? There can be many applications, but coming to the point, I'm going to write a small Go program in which I web scrap the last price uh, of a particular stock and uh, yeah we'll go from there onwards so let's say for example i am on apple uh, yahoo finance page so let's say if i'm if i want to get this price i mean you can you get any value or any price that you want but just for the demo purpose um, i am basically using this price right so let's say i will do an inspect element and you will see that it's a whole bunch of uh, HTML code uh, that's written here. Now uh, we see that there is a text, uh, this, there, there is a table. So this is a table. So there is a T body and then we have a, a row that is TR. So obviously there are a bunch of rows and then inside each row we have uh, two columns. So in this case uh, we have two values. One is uh, previous close and the other one is the exact value. So using a Go library, I will be looking out for the T body tag first, then look out for the TR tag, which is the row tag. And then I will look out for the column tags. And in that column, I will check if the first column value is previous close, then I know that the second value is what I need to fetch, right? So that is how I will go about it. So we will be making use of uh, existing code uh, from the last video. So let me quickly go ahead um, and open up. So I will go to my GitHub, your gist. So I have a public gist um, code. Um, this is the code which I had written to uh, concurrently run and hit some URLs. In this case also we'll be hitting this URL. So I will go about that. Uh, before that, let's go ahead and create a, a folder called demo and then I will CD into demo right now. As we all see, uh, I would initialize a mod file, which basically helps us in tracking the dependency. So I will do git mod in it. Um, let's name it demo itself. So we see a mod file was created. Now I will create a main.go file as well. Um, also, I will get a package called Kali. Uh, so if you Google this, um, C U L L Y go. So this package is basically a elegant scrapper and crawler. So it scrolls through the URLs that you give. Um, you can go over this and get more idea on what functionalities are available in this library. But for now I'll be using some basic, uh, functionalities and you will see that in the code. Um, I will quickly go ahead and import this, uh, dependency. So go get, uh, it will get us the dependency. Uh, okay, that's done. Um, now in the meantime, let me quickly open my project, which is the demo project. Um, okay, so my demo project will open here in a bit. Okay. Um, now let me copy this whole code because I'll be using this code um, and making the changes there itself. So, okay, uh, main dot go. Okay, so this is done. I'll give it a more uh, syntax to the dependencies. So FMT, I would be needing a logger. I would be needing a time to track how much time our program is taking. Um, and then github.com slash go slash right. 
so these are our dependencies now i will remove this uh, i will name this as stocks because you would be needing the stocks so let's say i would need one for apple one for microsoft one for amazon and one for palantir okay so we have all the stocks here i will do parse stocks right um and then stocks uh, i will rename this as this i'll change the channel name ch ch because i'll be using c for my um for creating a collie object uh, that will basically parse through my url now once i have done this um here i will do stock i will do a for loop on stocks right and this will be stocks okay and then once i am looping through the stocks i will send this to parse stock okay method and then this method is going to take a stock string a channel value and all obviously the weight group so everything else is as it is as i explained in the previous video uh, where i basically create go routines on uh, for fetching like or web scraping through different urls so it it will concurrently call all the four um urls for all the basically all the four yahoo finance pages and will be web scraping and web parsing through it and all the functionality will now go here in this method so let's remove all of these um and the way we create a collie object is using collie dot new collector and all this is available um in the what do you say in the repository which i shared now i'll just be copying pasting the default values so these are the default values um and then once the object is created i will then set uh, it also takes a uh, some value which sets a maximum parallelism that you need uh, to give so obviously our go routines are running in concurrently but uh, this kali library also does parallelize the program um, if you give some settings to it so we'll be giving it settings so we because we want it to be quicker so this is the syntax for it um, limit rule um, and then we give domain globe so it's for star and then we'll give parallelism value i'll just give it two for now um, i don't want it to be uh, too quick and uh, like causing any issues uh, then r star kali dot request log dot print ln so basically this is the initial part whenever we call uh, uh this object so uh, below i'll be calling the url i'll be specifying the url on which it needs to uh, go and web scrap it so once it does that once we give it the command that go to this website it basically calls this on request that okay what i need to do on the on request so here we can do visiting um and then we can give r dot url dot string so it will show which url it's actually visiting and once it it's there it also has an, some other callback methods like on html so as we see as we saw um there is a table and then we look for the row and then we look for the column so these three things are the ones that we need to look out for so on html so basically think that it's already sitting on the url now now it's basically going over um each html tag right so ele html element e for each so for each row uh, we'll be calling function underscore int so currently we are not interested in um, getting any what do you say getting any row id so because a table can have many rows so this 
integer basically specifies which row you are on and then for each row the html element for that row is being stored in this variable called el right so and then we call it html element and then we call this method now inside each row we know we can have multiple columns and that's what we need to target right so data slice um, string and here i will do like loop over each row so we'll loop over each row for each uh, we'll look for the td tag and then we we'll, it will be a separate function where each uh, value will be inside this index and then each column element will be part of this curly.html element data slice equal to append so we'll be adding our all the column values to this variable um, correct and then once we do that uh, we then come out of this method so our after this method our data slice will have in our case will have all the two values so first value like first index of the data slice will have previous close and the next index will have the uh, the stock price value so here we'll do uh, sorry so here we'll do if data slice um, so we need to check for the exact string which is previous close um, and then if it's there then we just send this value to the channel and as I had shown in the previous video uh, we can send data to the channel and we can get data from the channel if we have subscribed to that so price for uh, previous close is and then we just do data slice one okay so once this is done um, this is let's come out of this method now all these methods are there and they will be called when we actually call the uh, object of this uh, callee uh, class so what we do here is now we need to call the main thing so we visit and let's get the url from here and you will see that even if your url just has this last um, stock price it will go to this uh, page so what we can do we can use the common base method here uh, just remove this and obviously in the in the method we are passing the stock right as a string so just append it to this url and we do this and then we just wait till the time it completes so this is our code complete so what we are doing i'll quickly go over it we basically have our main method which will run uh, when we run our go app go uh, file now we have a stocks variable which basically specifies which stocks we need to uh, web scrap from finance yahoo then we have a method called pass stocks and then what we do here we create a channel we create a weight group um, and then we basically loop over the array and then we call different go routines so basically these array has four values right so it will create four go routine go routines and then um, for inside each routine i am basically creating a new uh, callee object and then i am just uh, going on that url and once i am there on the url i call the i look for the table i look for the row and then i look for the column once i have the column i look for the value and then once i find the value i am sending it back to the channel so that we can print it here and see that it works okay so let's see this in action um, i will just do go run main.go let's hope we don't get any errors okay cannot use uh, type string uh what is the issue here stocks okay so line 30 is this one uh, oh sorry i had to send this one okay okay so c dot limit is undefined c dot limit uh, i think it's the capital one sorry uh i think we don't have any other errors now okay uh you are url has no defined field uh why is that uh function r query dot request 
I thought you are oh I think it's the capital one okay so I guess we have passed all the errors we should see our program running um, look it's visiting all the URLs and then it fetches all the recent values and we see it got completed in 2.73 seconds quick if we, if I run it again I guess it might be a little quicker uh, it depends on uh, the different go routines and yeah so it's a little quicker but yeah it will be around this one so that's all for today's video uh, we learned about how we can web scrap uh, any website using go and we can actually utilize the power of go routines so if we had to do this without go routines think that it will do sequentially for each um, url and it might take a lot of time so i hope you guys like this video if so please subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up give me a like on this video and uh, follow me on instagram it does help me a lot um, thanks everyone